Hi, I'm going to tell you a short story about a little dog named Chulo. I'm going to show you his picture in a little while. It's a short story. Many years ago, like, ugh, I just moved out from Chicago. I moved out into the country, kind of. It isn't anymore. It was then because of horses. They wouldn't let me have a horse in my apartment in Chicago. So I moved out to horse country. And I was volunteering at an animal shelter, a CC Animal Foundation, wonderful place. It was the first no-kill shelter in the county, McHenry County. Um, and I'm not sure when they started, but before I started volunteering, they had been there for a while. So I was volunteering. I, I was just becoming an animal communicator. I wasn't calling myself one yet. I was hearing them. I had taken classes. I was I was hearing the animals when I was doing Reiki sessions, but I hadn't put it on my card yet because I couldn't guarantee that I would hear. So I went and they were very open to Reiki, which was fabulous. I would go and and I would share my Reiki hands with the animals. And they'd send me people, they'd refer people to me that I'd work from a distance. It was, it was lovely, it was a lovely place. It's still there actually. So one day I went and they, I don't know how this happened, but they asked me to work with Chulo and they knew that I could do the Reiki without touching them. And I was told very sternly not to touch him because he was a biter. He'd been brought to them he would stay them forever, forever, because you can't, I imagine in any state, but I know in Illinois, you can't adopt out a dog that's a known biter. So I was like, oh, okay. So they put me in this little enclosed area, a little patio. It's really nice, had a bench. And I was sitting and he was out there just kind of sniffing around, not paying any attention to me. And I had my Reiki hands up, you know, from a distance. It was just like sharing my Reiki hands with him. And next thing I knew, sorry, this isn't smooth, but let me, oh, come on, phantom. Oh, and this is a really tiny picture. Okay, can you see it? And the reason it's so tiny is because we didn't have, we didn't have camera phones then. She took it with a camera and sent me the picture and then I eventually had it put on, hey, this is what I had. And so, you can see how long ago it was. I had long brown hair. This is Chulo the biter. He jumped up. He just jumped up on the bench and put his butt up against me because he wanted my hands. <laughs> he showed me where he wanted my hands. And I didn't know he had the grin on his face. The woman who in charge of the place came around the corner. I guess she'd been watching us. I didn't know. Came around the corner and took a picture. And I still didn't know she'd done it until she sent it to me. So that's Chulo, the biter. And when I do, so I'm gonna, uns is he adorable? I'm sure he's no longer with us. This is like 23 years ago. But I love, I love that story. I love Chulo. Oh, I called him Chulito. So I asked him, cause you know, why not? Right, <laughs> I wasn't sure I'd hear him. He said, I was told you're a biter and that I shouldn't touch you. And he told me that it was a little girl maybe not a little girl, a child, I don't remember, a, a little child who had run up behind him and grabbed him. And he got, he, it startled him and he was afraid and he turned around and snapped. And he said, I didn't, I didn't mean any harm. She was a girl, was a little, little baby girl, and she, not baby, but a, not toddler either, but a little girl had grabbed him and scared him and he snapped at her. And Fortunately, he wasn't euthanized because that's what is often happens. He was brought to a no-kill shelter. So there's really no moral to the story. I just love the story because <laughs> Chulo's like, I'm not a biter. I, I just got scared, you know, and um, that look on his face, I'll never forget it. It's just this precious creature that I, that I love. But also, so two lessons, teach your children not to run up behind animals and grab them, even your own animals. It's rude. And you can you can startle them and you can get hurt. So that's one thing. But also listen to them. They'll t they'll tell you stuff. I mean, it didn't matter. I told the the owner of the place that that the story, and she's like, she said it made sense because he's not not aggressive. He's a sweetheart. 
So anyway, that's my story about Chulo. I'm Pam Sorellis of Winged Horse Healing. And if you would like to learn more about my work, you can go to wingedhorsehealing.com. I do sessions with animals, Reiki and animal communication. And I also teach classes. Uh, and the animal communication classes are online. So hope to hear from you soon. Take care.